After the Revolutionary War, settlers from the Watauga area began to move southwest. Many of them settled in and around the area known as Bean Station. The reason for the move was due to the fact that Bean Station was the site where the pathway from Cumberland Gap intersected with the old Indian war path, now known as the Great Wilderness Road. Due to its location, Bean Station became a central gathering place for travelers through the area. One such group that frequented the crossroads at Bean Station were known as the Long Hunters. They would go on hunting trips for maybe six months to a year. Uh, get fur, basically was the first ones looking for buffalo. And of course they would take the furs back if they survived the Indies and sell the furs. One of the most notable long hunters to travel through the area was Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone and William Bean actually came in this particular area in 1775 on a hunting trip. Uh, they settled and camped here overnight, and they liked the area for the tall timber, abundant wildlife, and fertile soil. So basically, when Boone goes off and fights in the Revolutionary War, and the state of North Carolina uh, awards him 3,000 acres, he comes back to where him and his buddy Boone had been on a hunting trip and claimed this land. In 1769, William Bean and his family became the first permanent white settlers in what would later become the state of Tennessee. By the early 1800s, Bean Station had gained a reputation for hospitality and refuge and was visited by other long hunters, including Elijah Walland and Colonel John Knox. Bean Station also became the home of the Russell family. In the early 1800s, Jesse Bean and William Russell leave Bean Station, go and join Alabama, in Alabama, joined Andrew Jackson in the Indian Wars. Well, there's another gentleman from Jefferson County went with him, and that was Davy Crockett. As the nation began to take shape, many parts of the area soon found itself under the control of the U.S. government. States were being developed, and county lines were being drawn. The area in and around Bean Station was no exception. And William Blount was appointed governor of the territory by President George Washington. Now, William Blount's wife was Murray Granger, who later Granger County would be named after, and to be the only county in the state named after a woman. Bean Station had become widely known as a destination. However, the Cherokee still claimed this land as its own and frequently attacked travelers through the area. For the safety of the travelers and their families, William Bean's sons decided to build a fort at the famous crossroads. If you're traveling from New Orleans, you're traveling from Texas, going to Washington, D.C., you came through this intersection. If you was traveling from the Carolinas to go up north, you came through this intersection. Soon, Bean Station, located in the newly formed Granger County, had become the region's center of commerce and travel. Somewhere around 18 and 12, uh, Bean Station Tavern was built at the famous intersection. Now this was the largest tavern between New Orleans and Washington, D.C. It uh, hosted many notable people, people such as President Andrew Jackson, President Andrew Johnson, President James K. Polk, Henry Clay, William Blunt, John Sevier, and actually the famous outlaw Jesse James stayed in the old tavern. They were called taverns, but really they were the hotels back in those days. It had a huge hotel, five or six saloons and three or four churches and a couple of mercantile stores at that time. Taverns outweighed everything else. The Bean Station Tavern also served as a post office. The first postal service was established in 1792, and this was from the Bean Station Tavern to Danville, Kentucky. And later on, somewhere around 1835, there was actually a stagecoach set up to where the, the travelers from the tavern would actually go to as far north as Lexington, Kentucky. More than a dozen U.S. presidents had ties to the area. Even the mother of Abraham Lincoln worked as a waitress at the Bean Station Tavern. I heard this story that uh, President Jackson, when he would come through, he would demand a bed by himself. He wasn't gonna sleep with anybody else. He, he, he wanted to make sure he had a bed by himself. The tavern, uh, of course, was uh, very famous 
for the animal herders who would bring their herds of animals from north down through the intersection. And actually they had places they could uh, place their animals when the herders stayed overnight and on their way to the south to sell whatever animals they was bringing. Throughout the 1800s, Granger County grew in both population and popularity. However, the residents of Granger County would see its beloved soil covered with the blood of both Union and Confederate soldiers during the Civil War. In December of 1863, after the Battle of Knoxville, Confederate General James Longstreet was in the process of moving his Confederate troops northeast through Granger County. At Bean Station, Longstreet's forces encountered the Union Army under the command of General James Shackelford. When Longstreet gets to Marble Hall in Hawkins County and receives word that he's in total command, he wants to fight again. So he turns and he sends one of his generals down the north side of the mountain, who was Grumble Jones, and he sends W.T. Martin down on the Hamlin County side on the other side of the Holston River. And he has General Kershaw, General Gracie, and General Bushrod Johnson to follow him and attack straight ahead in the valley. As they get to the area of Rock Springs on December the 13th at 2 p.m., the first shots is fired. Two o'clock in the afternoon till basically dark, you had a battle that took place. And most of the Civil War references in summarizing the battle tell us that 1,700 Union and Confederate soldiers were either killed, wounded, or lost during this particular afternoon. At the end of the first day of the Battle of Bean Station, the achievement was that General Longstreet's Confederate forces held the ground. So that's a, a tactical victory with the Confederate forces. The Union forces had to evacuate, retreat to another defensive line to the west of Bean Station, which is about three miles west of here. Then the next day, on the 14th, the fight started again, which resulted in Martin's Cavalry crossing the Holston River and Grumble Jones forces coming on this side of the mountain and were able to push the Federal forces back towards Blaine's Crossroad, at which time Union reinforcements came up out of Knoxville, and that was basically where the Battle Bean Station stopped, was just east of Blaine. 